The City of Winter Garden grants funds for home improvements. Updates from Oakland and Nakoe. Election season is upon us with some great questionnaires in the paper. The date is August 4th, 2022. We're going to go through these stories and more. Welcome to West Orange on the Go. My name is Austin Arthur, and this is where we do local news and comments. And when I say local news, I mean hyper-local. West Orange, this is your news. We begin in 10 seconds. You're listening to West Orange on the go. Brought to you by the West Orange Times and Observer. Hosted by Austin Arthur. West Orange on the go. The City of Winter Garden approves a grant for neighborhood revitalization in East Winter Garden. The $40,000 grant will allow West Orange Habitat for Humanity to improve a minimum of 16 homes over an 18-month period. The commissioner for that district is Mark Mayshall. He said, quote, We are fortunate to have a partner like the Habitat for Humanity. They have been crucial in our efforts to revitalize East Winter Garden. Building generational wealth for this community is our top priority. In quotes, a great commissioner and a great organization. In other news, there are elections upon us. And before the August 23rd primary, the Observer will be publishing Q&As featuring candidates and key races that will appear on the ballot in West Orange and Southwest Orange. Now, the Orange County mayor is running for re-election and he faces three challengers. Now, you can get all the information on these candidates, including their answers to the West Orange Times and Observer's Q&A in this week's paper. Now, don't forget that election is August 23rd. And now on over to the town of Oakland. In addition to revealing a beautiful new logo, which you could view at orangeobserver.com, the Oakland Town Commission has proposed lowering its millage rate again for fiscal year 2022-2023. The elected officials approved a tentative budget of $22.4 million and a millage rate of 6.3, a reduction from the current rate of 6.4, and a continuation of a steady decrease from 6.75 in 2017. Now, the breakdown is all in this week's paper by the great Amy Questenberry. And now we're going to head on back toward the direction from which we came toward the east on over to Ocoee. The Ocoee City Commission will be moving into its new city hall on Friday, August 5th. Now that's tomorrow. Now in part, Mayor Rusty Johnson says, quote, One of the main purposes is that we are moving more to the center of town. It's in a better location here, and it's also more accessible to citizens. The three-story building spans more than 46,000 square feet, and it's beautiful. You know, it reminds me of the Winter Garden City Hall, very similar in style, uh, which I think is terrific. The more unity and cohesiveness our cities and townships have, well, I think the better. We, uh, as West Orange, are powerful largely because of our great municipalities. Now, when you're looking for West Orange news, we have been doing this for 116 years. So you go to orangeobserver.com, you check us out on the Facebook page. Big red boxes are all around town. Now, this is a service to our community. The paper is free. All right, and like I said, if you want to learn about West Orange County, If you want to get your education on the history of West Orange County, well, all of it is documented by the West Orange Times and Observer. Like I said, over 116 years. Okay, now let's go ahead and break it up here into a a final quick uh, few headlines before we get into the final page. Now, Axiom Bank is holding a food drive to benefit Matthew's Hope in the Hamlin area. More details can be found on the website or on the Facebook page. A new multi-way stop is coming to the intersection of Summer Lake Grove Street and Seidel Road. 
in order to address traffic concerns and pedestrian safety with the opening of the new Panther Lake Elementary OCPS school. And finally, the Orange County Classroom Teachers Association and Orange County Public Schools have an agreement for the 2022-2023 school year. Starting salaries will increase from $47,500 to $48,400. Now, there's lots more detail, and it's all on orangeobserver.com. Now, if you know me, you know that my faith is the center of my life. Now, my daughter, she was at a school that didn't align with the values and the principles of my belief system. Now, our children, well, they're our children. They're not uh, the children of the system. They're not the children of the government. They're not the children of the community at large. Our children are our own, and we have a duty to inculcate our values and principles into them. Now, not all of our values and principles are the same. They're different from family to family. And so that's why I think it's important to take the time to consider your child's education, or for that matter, your grandchild's education. You know, between work and um, sleeping, a lot of times families find themselves in a situation where during the week, they are with more interactive hours with their teacher than they are with mom or dad. The school that we chose is a sponsor for this program. It's Foundation Academy. They serve grades pre-K through 12. I believe that the biggest problem with our society is a question of character. So having said that, I think it's clear. Their slogan says everything to me. Foundation Academy, where character matters. So on this program, on this program, we have discussed what I refer to as the West Orange Commissioner. Now, that is the Orange County Commissioner for District 1, covering the west side of the county. Now, if you are a listener of this program and you've listened for, you know, some time, well, first of all, thank you. Uh, But you may recall I mentioned that she called me. Um, This was maybe a few months ago. She left a voicemail and she said that she wanted to correct me or correct the paper. Um, And I reached out the next day and I I never heard back. But I did try to reach back out and um, just, you know, never heard back what we needed to correct, what I needed to correct. I wasn't too clear on which it was. But, you know... She has taken to social media to reveal some grievances she has with this paper, our great paper of record here in West Orange. Well, specifically with our editor and publisher, Michael Ng. So I think we shall dive into this just a bit. Now, remember, though, before we do dive into this, just remember, I am not a journalist. Far from it. I am not a part of the objective reporting side of the West Orange Times and Observer. This is a news and comment program. You know, I offer subjective editorial style comments. And I offer that uh, not on behalf of the West Orange Times and Observer, but on behalf of me, Austin Arthur. Okay, so let's read... uh, (laughs) Nicole Wilson, Commissioner Nicole Wilson's uh, tweets that I guess she reposted on Facebook. And they read, What happened to journalistic integrity? I found out that Orange Observer asked candidates for Orange County Mayor, quote, District 1 constituents have differences of opinion with the representation or lack of representation of the sitting District 1 commissioner. As mayor... 
how would you address these? End quote. And then she writes, bias. <laughs> Orange Observer editor, that's Mike Ng, won't pick up the phone, no show to a meeting. Embedding disparaging remarks about a duly elected official in a questionnaire for a different race is a violation of journalistic ethics and could be consequential for my supervisor of elections canvassing board duties. End quote. Now, what she is talking about is that the paper releases questions to all the candidates. Now, those questions can certainly be subjective in nature, but what is true is that all the candidates receive the same questions. There's the objectivity. It's equal for each candidate, the people that are actually running for something. The area covered by the paper is West Orange County. District 1 commissioner that is referenced in the question to the mayors, to the potential mayors, is the commissioner for West Orange County. So to put this into perspective, let's, let's go for an analogy. I love analogies. You know, it really helps to get a comprehension of a principle. This is akin to a questionnaire, let's say, for U.S. president. You know, let's say somebody's running for president of the United States, something we're all very familiar with. Now, in that questionnaire, it could be very likely that, um, you know, maybe they have a question about the Speaker of the House at the time. You know, that the people are divided on the current Speaker of the House and his or her leadership. And how would that potential president work with that uh, speaker or handle that? You know, this is a a reasonable question if indeed there is a reasonable uh, belief that some citizens are divided. So I guess the challenge to the question could be, is it true that people have expressed that they're unhappy with the District 1 commissioner? Uh, And perhaps that's to be explored. But she was pretty upset, to say the least. She said she might become basically insinuated that she might be ineligible for supervisor of elections uh, board seat, which is totally untrue. In that seat, she can't be in an active election or supporting a candidate in an election. But that doesn't mean that a candidate can't speak about her performance. Uh, That obviously has nothing to do with it. People are still allowed to have opinions about her. It doesn't disqualify her from uh, that board seat. So her midnight posting uh, went on, quote, The sad part is that I really believe in the power of a free and independent press, so I always make myself available and transparent. I will continue to be direct in my actions and words despite this sneak attack by the Orange Observer. And hopefully, their intentions will be revealed in the coming days. Hashtag integrity. Hashtag transparency. Hashtag independent journalism. Hashtag Orange County. So she went on and, um, you know, she went on and said more. I mean, there's, there's more. She said, with all due respect, election integrity is more important than your paid advertisements. And the quote, back to school guide. I will be at the supervisor of elections today if you'd like to cover some news. She also publicly accused him of not showing up for a meeting. And, you know, she shares all kinds of screenshots from their, you know, their private correspondence on this this post. And then Mike chimed in. He said, this is not true. Your team suggested a meeting time. I replied and let you know that didn't work. I also suggested another time that would work. Moreover, you did speak to one of our reporters in the interim. And he went on to say, I'm sure we can find a time that works for both of us to meet. Please contact me via more traditional methods rather than on Twitter and Facebook to schedule. You know, the whole thing is kind of messy. Uh, The next morning at 8 a.m., she kind of reposted more or less what she had said at midnight the night prior. Um, you know, this is, this isn't the first time that she's publicly, you know, gone on social media to ridicule government or other organizations in West Orange. The same thing happened with the COE. 
You know, she called the leaders there unintelligible, uh, something to that effect. You know, let me just say that I know that in national politics, it is very common for politicians to take to social media and attack. You know, both sides of the aisle, you know, do it. All manner of politicians seem to uh, do this on the national level. But this is not national politics. This is West Orange County. You know, in West Orange, we don't, you know, we don't treat each other like that. We, we know each other. We see each other at events. You know, we focus on fundraisers and improvements with infrastructure, or, you know, other actual problems. We are a community, a community that believes in character. And yes, that matters. You know, I don't like bullies. I never have. You know, even as early as middle school, I remember dealing with these types. You know, they like to go in front of others in large groups to ridicule and humiliate people that they don't like. I didn't stand for it then, and I don't stand for it now, especially not in our community by elected officials. Elected officials that go onto social media at 12 a.m. in the morning to attack people in our community. Now, I will report that her post on social media did not get a lot of attraction, but did receive this particular reply from somebody, and I will read it verbatim. Quote, honestly, I live in District 1. I sent an email to your office weeks ago about a problematic business, and it has gone unanswered. My neighbor sent messages about the sinkhole on Hunter's Creek Boulevard, and he too hasn't been responded to. Maybe the Orange Observer could have approached it differently, but District 1 residents do feel overlooked. This has been Austin Arthur with West Orange Times and Observer. And until next week, have a happy and blessed weekend. West Orange on the Go is brought to you by the West Orange Times and Observer. Hosted by Austin Arthur. West Orange on the Go.